Good morning, world. This is Dr. Rico Short, the Root Canal, special to the stars, the Grace Life teacher, the inspirational motivator for you on this wonderful Wednesday. Today, I want to talk to you guys about something that we all face in life, and it's called the waiting period. The waiting period. See, one of the things that's frustrating as human beings, even believers, is to wait. We don't like waiting. We can be very, very impatient. How many of you guys ever driven a car before? I know most of you guys have. Have you ever got behind somebody that was going slow in the left lane? I know I have. You want to honk your horn. You want to ride their bumper. You probably want to call them all kind of four-letter words. And you just can't wait. That's the key word to get around them and waiting creates that kind of frustration waiting creates anxiety waiting also creates that that tension that you just want to relieve but guess what waiting does as a believer waiting is actually preparation and repeat that waiting is preparation and see as I always say God is more interested in the process processing us than our final destination. I'm going to repeat that. God is often more interested in the process of refining us than in the destination. If you think about a beautiful vase, well, the vase isn't beautiful automatically. That vase starts with mud. That vase starts with water. And somebody's hands has to get dirty. They have to mix the ingredients together. They have to stack it up together. And then once it's in the right form, they have to put it in an oven. Can you imagine what that vase feel like while it's getting prepared? It doesn't like it. It's getting touched all over. It's getting dirty. It's getting spun around. It's getting dizzy. And when the spinning stops, you think it's over. But then it's placed into a very hot oven where it's uncomfortable again. It wants to quit. In fact, it wants to crack. And then when it gets out that oven and then it has to cool off. And now it goes from intense temperature of heat. to now it's actually cold. Have you ever been swimming on a cool day and you got out and the water just you know, the wave and the wind just hit you. You're like, oh man, I just got a chill all down through my soul. Imagine how this piece of art felt. And then once that happened, it has to get glazed. And then it has to go back into the fire again. And then come back and go through the same process again. And then it has to cool off and then it has to get painted. So here it is, all this sticky stuff is getting placed on this piece of art. And then at the end, people will look and say, man, this is beautiful. What a piece of art. In fact, I was reading the other day where somebody found a bowl in a yard sale and bought this bowl for $35. It was like an Asian bowl, nothing really you know, significant about it. You probably had something like this in your mom's china cabin. And they ended up taking it somewhere to get appraised. And so this $35 ordinary looking bowl actually appraised for a half a million dollars, $500,000. This piece of art was actually dated back to the Ming Dynasty. (laughs) So something that we thought that was so insignificant because of what it looked like or for the amount that we paid for it ended up becoming a prized piece, a prized possession. And beloved, that's how we are. We are being worked on constantly. God has his hands on us. He's molding us. He's shaping us. He's putting us in and out of the fire so that we can shine, so that we can be the best version that he has created us to be. And oftentimes we get frustrated 
And there's been many people in the Bible that got frustrated because of time. And last night when I was with my guys, we had a, had a Bible study and we talked about David. David was the runt brother of the family. David was the one that was in the back shepherding sheep, taking care of stinky, smelly sheep. So when Samuel came to the house of, of Jesse to anoint the next king, all the brothers that was look better, that was smarter, they were all in line. But guess what? When they got ready to pour the oil or the anointing to find out who the next king was going to be, the oil never flowed on those other brothers. And Samuel said, surely, Jesse, you have another son. Anybody else? He said, yeah, I have another runt son. I have the son that, you know, possibly some of the historians say that I had out of wedlock. I had an affair with someone. So he's he's not my full son. And guess what? Samuel he said, go get him. So I can imagine David walking in, scrawny, skinny, smelly David, and say, hey, what's going on in here? I'm not used to being in the house. I'm used to being an outcast. I'm used to being talked about. I'm used to being on the outside of favor. But when Samuel saw David, he said, okay, let me pour the oil. And the oil flowed all the way from the top of David's head down to his feet. And David would eventually become the next king. Now, David wasn't king overnight. The Bible says it was 14 years before David took the seat of king. And he had to go through all kinds of trials in his life. Trials of addiction. Trials of betrayal trials of adultery. David went through all kinds of trials and challenges, but God still called him a man after his own heart. Likewise with us, beloved, when we go through life, you know, we will go through trials. We will face temptations. We will face addictions. We will face hardships. We will face loss. We will face people betraying us. We will face, you know, uh, um, situations that seem unsurmountable. We will deal with health issues. We deal, we'll deal with marital issues. We de we'll deal with business and financial issues. But guess what, man? We have someone that said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We have God that says he will never, ever leave us nor forsake us. So what we have to do in that waiting period, we have to trust and we have to keep our hand, our spiritual hand in God's hand. And we have to know that he's going to perfect everything that concerns us. Whatever we're facing right now, whatever, wherever we've experienced a stumble. And it seems like, man, I keep stumbling in this area. We have to remember that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from not some unrighteousness, all unrighteousness. And God looks at us through the lens of Jesus' finished work without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, even on your worst day. Man, that's enough to keep us sustained in the waiting period because the waiting period is going to come to us all. The Bible also talks about those that wait on the Lord will mount up on wings like eagles and they shall run and not be weary. And they shall not faint. See, it's different because the world tells us to get, get, get. Rush, rush, rush. You got to do this. You got to do that. No, God's system doesn't tell us. God's system shows us to rest, trust, and receive. Rest, trust, and receive. And that's what we do during the waiting period. We rest in God's promises. We trust what he says in his word and receive the gift of righteousness, grace, and truth. That's how we become overcomers in this world, beloved. That's what we do. 
in the waiting season. So some of you guys are waiting right now. Some of you guys are waiting on God to deliver you from an addiction. Some of you guys are waiting on God to bring you that soulmate. Some of you guys are waiting on a financial breakthrough. Some of you guys are waiting on a job. Some of you guys are waiting on the on the relationship to get right with your parents. Some of you guys are waiting for your children to come back home. Some of you guys are waiting for your children to get out of jail. Some of you guys are waiting for your children to get out of get off drugs. But what do you do in that waiting period? You trust God and his word. And one of the key I want to leave you with today is you worship you worship while you wait. See, when you worship, what you do, you offload all your issues and you put them on Jesus. <laughs> you offload all your issues and you put them on Jesus. And that takes a weight off of you. When you worship while you wait, you experience the fruit of the spirit. And one of the ways you know that you experience the fruit of the spirit is that you have joy. You have a joy in the situation. You have a joy that the world cannot explain. It reminds me when I had my eye injury, when I didn't know what I was going to do. I could not work. I lost income. I was out of work for seven months and I was, I put my practice up for sale and I didn't know what I was going to do. And I got to a point where I said, Lord, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to worship while I wait. And I was able to experience the joy of the Lord, which was the fruit of the spirit. And I let go and I let God do what he can do. And next thing you know, I had my eye surgery. Next thing you know, I saw my first patient. The next thing you know, I saw two patients and on and on. And a year and a half later, God has built my practice better and stronger now than we were ever before. And he's continuing to give me an influence all over the world. And beloved, if he can do it for me, guess what? He can do it for you. So whatever challenge you're facing right now, I just want to encourage you, it's not over. If you're still alive, God has a plan for you, and his plan is good. All right? It's good, man. So I want you to just continue to trust God and find a way to enjoy the waiting season, man. We all have seasons, you know. See, see, in the natural, we have four seasons. We have spring, we have summer. We have fall and we all have winter, but in the spirit realm, we have a fifth season and that's called the due season and the due season can happen any moment. It doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter how high you are or how low you are. Due season for the believer can happen anytime and your due season is coming if you don't faint, if you don't quit. I'm praying for you. I'm believing God's best for you. And I pray that if this message have touched you, I just ask you to share this message with somebody. These messages are posted on YouTube. You can share this message. If you want to get more information about this kind of teaching, go and check out my book, man, In the Eye of a Storm, 45 Days of Turbulence and Peace, or my other book. It's called Getting to the Root of Your Problem, 365 Days of Inspirational Thinking. I promise you, if you apply the principles in this book, that your life will change. Love y'all. Grace life. Peace.